let me just indicate here we're going this way this goes this way come down and now we're going that way one important point here remember when we went through the t diagram what did we say is this right this is the amount of heat that the condenser will need to remove from that saturated vapor going into it right to turn it into saturated liquid this is equal to h f g remember at what at this temperature at p of the turbine outlet how do we do that hmm. let's go take a look at that all right so we are at the end uh, we are at the exit uh, of the condenser and we're about to enter the cooling tower. There's one thing that's missing from this diagram that uh, I kept out up until this point for, again, the sake of availability. I'm going to take this away, P7 equals P6, and I will add it down here. P7 equals P6. I'm going to use the space to draw up the secondary cooling loop that we are using to cool the condenser. The flow, the, uh, the fluid will flow outside, uh, out of the condenser and into the cooling tower. The cooling tower is actually open to the atmosphere. This will operate at ambient conditions. And ambient, condition, uh, ambient conditions are typically taken to be 15 T ambient, 15 degrees C, P ambient, one bar. We need to make sure that uh, this external loop that we have, and it's separate in a sense, right? Now this is the cooling water that circulates uh, there's no mixing here, so this is essentially a heat exchanger. You have water at ambient conditions that gets uh, diverted into this line, passes through the condenser. You have the Q, the H, F, G passing into here from the steam. As we condense, we go from 6 to 7. That comes out of saturated liquid. This is actually warmer, right? So it leaves out warmer. And it gets sprayed out in here. Trickles down. The, uh, the walls of the cooling tower cools down, collects at the bottom. Now, the way we've set up the, the problem, we have uh, evaporation from the cooling tower. And we said that the evaporation is equal to about 35% of uh, the amount of fluid coming in from uh, the condenser. That has to be taken out of this and uh, put into, um, into the uh, external loop, feeding the um, the cooling of uh, the cooling water. The concept is that we are going to take 35% of the uh, liquid, the saturated liquid coming in from seven, to make sure that the cooling water, the amount of cooling water circulating that external loop stays um, uh, stays the same. This is important because it is imperative that we take HFG out of the steam to condense it, else you're going to get, if you don't get the entire amount, say you'll go from six somewhere here, well you're going to get two phase fluid, right? To complete that calculation, you need to use equations, equations five, six, and seven 
uh, as given in page 6 of 8 from your assignment. Now let's see what we have. We know that m dot of the cooling water, and this is from equation 5, okay, is equal to m dot of the turbine steam outlet. Turbine, steam outlet, 6 will be m dot 6 times delta H of the condenser over CP of the condenser outlet times delta T of the condenser. Hmm. Okay, so this particular one is actually one of the properties you can uh, look up in uh, the same tables. What you need to do is look at the table on the top of page 7 and you'll see that we have two values for CP. One is CPF, saturated fluid, uh, saturated liquid, and CPG for saturated vapor. So this indicates that we need to use the value uh, at the condenser outlet. So let's look at the condenser outlet. That would be at 7, okay? So that would be CP7. Hmm. What is my pressure at 7? Oh, I know it. It's actually the same as 6, the same at the outlet of the turbine. So this is known. We can use that. Do I also know my phase? Yes, I do. It's saturated liquid. All right. So instead of CP7, what I need to use is CPF at P7. And that is no. All right. How about the other two? Well, let's take a look at equation 6 and see what that says. Equation 6, we have delta H at the condenser is equal to H turbine steam outlet. Okay, turbine steam outlet H. Oh, wait, this is H6 and it's no, we know it, we used it before. And we also have H condenser water outlet. Uh huh, that's the condenser, that's the water, so the saturated liquid outlet, that's seven, so it would be H. 7 minus H7. That is also known. So this is known. Great. It's done. And from equation 7, we get that delta T is equal to T at the steam turbine outlet. Mm -hmm. Now that's a tricky one. We have a steam turbine outlet, right? So it would be at 6. So it will be T6 minus T at the cooling water outlet. Cooling water outlet. We assume that's at ambient conditions. So that would be T at 8. Right? This is equal to 15 degrees C. Well, what about T6? If you go back to that table on the top of page 7, you'll see that the saturated temperature is also included. Why is it important? Well, because at 6, I know that I have saturated vapor. If I know the pressure, and I do, I know P6, I can also look, up the, uh, look for the saturated temperature. So T6 is actually T, because saturated vapor, it would be G, right? at P6. Is that known? Oh, yes it is. I can look it up. Great. That's known. That's known. I know this. I know that. And I just found out my cooling water. I just sized my system. This is great. To complete this, and we're almost done with this analysis. You guys, if, you're, if you've stayed with me so far, congratulations. You're great. Because we're almost done, okay? We know what we have in terms of m dot at 7, okay? So m dot 7 is known, right? 
we need to know what we have at n dot eight. Now there's mixing here. I have not told you how much that evaporation is in relation to the size of the cooling water, and we don't care. All we need to know is how much of that condensate that's um, coming into the cooling tower are we going to extract to uh, uh, supplement for what's lost due to evaporation. That's 35%, okay? So, and eight, what's coming out of here, oh, and I need blue, it's coming out of here, through here, will be equal to m dot seven times one minus point three five or m dot seven is equal to sorry m dot eight is equal to m dot seven times point six five sorry six five eight Okay, so I am almost done. What's left? We've got the pump, okay? Typically, the pump will get an increase in pressure. Now, uh, within this whole system, we can safely assume that um, the pump will have no effects on the flow. We've expanded here, and we know we're at one atmosphere, or at one, one bar, absolutely. Um, well, what you can continue to assume quite safely is that you also have one bar here and this is what you're going to be injecting back into the cold reservoir right? the reinjection reservoir but wait are we done the last part of this um, Assignment asks, how much will you need to reinject back into the ground? And by need, we mean how much do we have left over when we are done taking what we need from the system, which is our P, right? The P we produce from the generator. That P over here, which I'm actually going to indicate as this. So this is what we got from the system, that P. So when we're done with this, we gotta have to clean up. We, left ha we have some leftover water out here, and that was uh, the, con uh, the saturated liquid leaving the separator. Remember the pressure at the separator? For the purposes of the example, um, we said at 7 bar. It's higher than what we have here. It's going to be mixing. Right? In order to mix those two, we need to expand. So the concept is that as this goes through the valve, it becomes also uh, expand. It also expands at one bar and then can be safely put back into the ground. Uh, one last comment about um, these two reservoirs. Here you have the cold reservoir, right, and you have the water flowing in. Great. 